On an Arizona Lotus Corporation radio station. Stream us on your cell, laptop, desktop, or tablet at KFMA.com. You want it? You got it. Reality radio done right. right. No nonsense, real and raw, just like you like it. He's corrupt, he's inexperienced, and he lies. Broadcasting from a broom closet in the Arizona Lotus Studios, it's Beef Vegan Presents. <laughs> Yo, welcome back to the show. It's Beef Vegan Presents Live on Rockland 2.1 KFMA Street, but worldwide at KFMA.com on this beautiful Wednesday, March 13th. Good morning, Weirdo. Good morning. And you're looking lovely today, Thank by the you. way. Yeah, so yeah, you just wait till you see Weirdo in the stream later on the podcast broadcast. It is professional Weirdo. Yeah. It is manager Weirdo. It is, uh, I don't know, I ran out of Weirdos. <laughs> Very classy, though. Uh, yeah, classy fact, weirdo. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. Damn it. It was right there. Uh, yeah. I, now I got to step up my game. Next time you come in, I'm going to wear a three-piece suit myself. Oh. Right? Yeah, yeah. A tie. That, That'd be nice. You know, doesn't have, like, uh, piano keys on it. You know? It would be nice. Yeah, yeah. I, okay. I could dress up okay. I got to get a haircut, but, you know. Uh, like, yeah. I know where you can go. Well, yeah. There you go. Yeah, Rustics, because that's yeah. where you've been working. Yes. Uh, I, I was talking with our, our salesperson the other day. We figured out when we're going to do our next Beard Envy con, uh, competition. And I believe the next semifinal is going to be on April 19th, which is a Friday. It coincides with a couple big deals. It would be my radio anniversary, 420. Mm -hmm. It's technically my radio anniversary. I started in 2009, so uh, that would be my 15th year. Wow, big, big, big year. Deal. I know, I know. Uh, and a lot of people, you know, obviously didn't think I'd get this far, uh, you know. And it's a weird thing when I started doing – a radio and I did it in such a fast backwards way, you know, like uh, how I got into radio is I answered a Craigslist ad mm. uh, and, and this guy D rock, who is my buddy. Now I was looking for a co-host for a once a week night show, right. Uh, on a station I never heard of. I couldn't even tune it in. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even know if it was a real station and it kind of wasn't, it was a station that you could only hear for like three square miles. Right. And uh, I figured that was my foot in the door. And I just started, you know, doing it and doing it every day and, and taking the opportunity and uh, started doing the uh, morning show to where no one was listening. And it was a weird thing that happened along the way. Like, well, a motivating factor for me uh, at the beginning uh, for a long time was uh to prove people wrong about me mm -hmm. right you know naysayers you know, a lot of people who probably uh you know knew me growing up or whatever just thought i would just be a bum or a loser or just couldn't do anything right i mean that's such a good motivator like in, in spite of you i'm still going to do this yes yes very stubborn and hard-headed and wanted to prove to uh, any naysayers or haters out there that i wasn't a loser and that was a motivating factor for sure uh, but then it changed at some point, and I don't know exactly when uh, my motivation changed, but it went from proving people wrong about me, and then all of a sudden I realized that I kept pushing myself to prove those who believed in me right. Mm. Uh, and I still continue to do that uh, because there are a lot of people along the way that uh, end up believing in me and our abilities to be able to do this show and make it entertaining and grow it and do this for a living you know, this, this is the dream and that's exactly what we're doing. And, and yeah, so now I'm every morning I wake up, no matter how tired or, or frustrated if my personal fails, uh, you know, I, I wake up with the motivation to try to approve those of you out there listening, right about me, us, the show. And that's what we're doing here. So as we get close to 15 years, I'll, I'll figure that out. So the next Beard on V contest is going to be April 19th, radio anniversary, uh, and we should have Kevin Smith in the studio. So it should be one of those big kind of like jam-packed shows that just like beautifully chaotic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm excited about that, but that's neither here nor there because we got about a month before that happens. Right. Uh, as we are, you know, inching towards St. Patrick's Day, we have that ha happening. Uh, and this weekend is going to be off the chain. Flog and Molly's at Rialto on Friday. Yes. That's a sold out show. I'm going to try to sneak into that and be super Irish on Friday mm -hmm. and then hungover and responsible working Roadrunners games on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And I'll be at the Roadrunners game on Sunday. Yes. Oh, good. That's, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. And in fact, everyone who uh, ends up winning tickets, make sure you message and remind me uh, just so I, I get you in, which I will. And it'll be like front row and it'll be super fun. 
Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. My boys are excited. Yeah. All right. Now, um, you know, I come up with some theories that sometimes uh, tend to be true. Now, this one uh, is odd because uh, you know I've I've been talking about this for years. I I realized during pandemic when OnlyFans uh, became a super popular platform. Uh, you know, it, quickly after it popped up on my radar, I noticed a pattern, and that pattern was you know how women. Uh, or content creators kind of initially start in OnlyFans. They mm -hmm. dip their toes in it. They do some tasteful nudes, you know, right. um, some, you know, suggest suggestive thoughts or shots. Uh, and then eventually, before you know it, it's full blown, uh, full blown porn. Right. Right. Uh, this happens time and time again. Mm -hmm. And I know this for a fact. And uh, one of the most notable OnlyFans clients is Sammy Sheen, mm -hmm. that is Charlie Sheen's uh, daughter. Now, of course, you know, the sheen doesn't fall too far from the tree. Sammy's 20 years old. Uh, she started OnlyFans right, right around 18. Yeah. And there was nothing that her dad, the man who lives off tiger blood, uh, you know, could say about it because his docu like well-documented cocaine and porn addiction and sex addiction for that matter. So, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, that's uh, there you go. That that was bound to happen. Right. Uh, but Sammy assured the world that she was just going to be modeling. She's going to do some tasteful nudes and, and, and then just build up her catalog from there. Right. Uh, and within 18 months, Sammy has now gone full boy girl collab and oh, hardcore okay. porn. Yeah. There we go. Yep. So, it, again, this is just, and I'm not putting her on blast. I'm just pointing out the natural evolution to anyone and everyone who ends up being on OnlyFans. If you like have a famous, uh, like if you have a celebrity crush on someone and she like says, hey guys, I'm gonna do a little OnlyFans thing on the side. And you're like, man, I wish you would do hardcore porn. Just wait, just wait. Just give them a minute. It's going to happen. And now who's the dude? Uh, I know, some dude, uh, Aiden David. Uh, okay. He's a TikTok star. Oh, so he's dipping <laughs> yeah. his toes now into the only thing. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. So he's a good looking kid too. I mean, I haven't seen the video and I'm not going to spend $20 a month uh, to check that out because there are other sites that offer that same type of entertainment for free. Uh, and I am the, the old school mentality uh, that why would you pay for something that you can get for free? <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah. Sammy uh, did make headlines by announcing this first boy girl collab first of probably many. Uh, after getting parents Charlie Sheen and Denise Richards' blessing to become a sex worker. Uh, so, you know, she's raking in the dough and good for her, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And now we have, we've always had nepotism in this country, uh, at least in the last hundred years, especially. Or actually, you know, in all human history, you know, the royal family, that's nepotism, right? Right. Uh, so uh, it just uh, makes sense that nepotism would also trickle down to porn, too. <laughs> You know, I was like, ah, she's only making millions of dollars as a porn actress because of her parents. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, who wouldn't want to see that? About it. I don't know. I mean, she did since she started. Right. Uh, she's gotten breast implants from her, uh, you know, her profits and now full blown porn. I don't know why this is breaking news to me, but I'm like, I can't wait to share with everybody. Guys, I was right again. That's the point. I was right again. So, you know, like I said, uh, if you have, if you're in a relationship and your girl's like, Hey, I'm thinking about just making a little extra money on, uh, you know, starting up an only fans page. I only sell feet pics though. And, and right. butt shots. Don't trust it. No. Don't believe it. Cause it starts off that way. And then they realize, wait a second, I'm not making that much money. And all these creeps in my DMS are saying, oh, I want to see this, this, and this. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're going to do it. And then they're going to do it because money talks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of money, we're going to be giving away $2,000 today at 630. I'm going to give you another opportunity to all right, let me jump in on the uh, podcast broadcast. Good morning, everybody. We're going to go live on the air here. I got a uh, very special guest. He's an Arizona Ghostbuster. This is Roy, everybody. Uh, we're going to give a tease as to why uh, Roy is in the studio, what we're going to be talking about and promoting uh, that coincides with the release of Ghostbusters Afterlife, right? Is Frozen it? Empire. Frozen Empire. Afterlife, Afterlife was, was the last see? one. Yeah. Ah, I'm getting my <laughs> Ghostbuster films confused. It's Rock One 2.1. Yeah. Uh, we got Arizona Ghostbuster Roy Wageman in studio. And we, we're going to talk about this fun charitable event that's going to be happening at the Roadhouse Theaters that coincides with the release of the sequel to the remake that is the franchise of Gold, Ghostbusters. Right. And it's called Frozen Empire, which the early reviews on this are actually really good. Yeah, I haven't even seen those yet. Yeah. Like, the trailers look wild. I'm happy about them cracking open the story, bringing it back to New York. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, we're going to talk about Arizona Ghostbusters 2, how long they've been an organization. You might have seen Roy, uh, you know, in full Ghostbusters gear at the Arizona uh, Book Festival 
Or is that Tucson Book Festival, I should mm-hmm. say. And he was also featured on the news, uh, you know, because they, when you see a Ghostbuster, you stop and ask questions, right? You <laughs> so, see that equipment, we're serious about it. You know, it's, we call it cause business, not cause play. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a cause business. Uh, yeah, so you could have a lot of fun uh, while enjoying the new Ghostbuster film and raising money for charity. We're going to get all that information right after the latest from Pearl Jam. This is Dark Matter, and we're live on the podcast broadcast. So join us, youtube.com slash be vegan it's the podcast broadcast clear all right so that was our on-air tease and then we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of things Sweet. and i'm going to show some uh, pictures here of your cause business <laughs> attire <laughs> which is pretty good because i i, I want to see your proton pack because this is uh basically this yeah, is what blows go. everyone's mind because yeah. everyone can get to the brown jumpsuit right Right. Uh, right. But uh, to get that, and is it a proton pack? Um, Am I saying that right or no? My buddy Jordan there is wearing a proton pack. My daughter in the photo, she's wearing one modeled after the uh, real Ghostbusters cartoon. And I just nice. built a slime blower from uh, Ghostbusters 2. So I've been rocking that. Now, it's a, does, is it an actually working uh, slime I, blower? I wanted to make it work. Yeah, Maybe dude. I'll retrofit it, you know. Yeah, to <laughs> get, get some tank. slime blowing out of that thing? Yeah, 4,000 PSI. You know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so uh, here you are at the Tucson Festival of Books. Uh, you know, uh, how many people are in Arizona Ghostbusters? Uh, there are about 50 members right now. Nice. But most of them are in Phoenix. We're always looking for new members in Tucson. There's four of us right now that are really active in Tucson. So, yeah, always looking to boost the numbers. Well, four is the original number, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, do you each associate with a certain character? Is anyone Peter Bankman? Anyone? You seem no, Bankman esque. Well, you know, I'm more of an Egon or, you know, okay. these days more of a Winston. I'm just in it for the paycheck, right? <laughs> no, um, no the, the cool thing about it is, is we have our own names on our jumpsuits. You know, we're not playing movie characters, we're just embodying the, the franchise, embodying the job itself. Right. You know? Yeah, so, so it basically, if a Ghostbusters turned into a, like a national organization or just a, a service, a public service like firefighters, exactly. right? then, you know, you would just be one of those people that go through the training, get recruited and, and start working and saving lives. Exactly. And protecting the exactly. Yeah, there's that line in the first movie where Venkman says the franchise rights alone will make us rich beyond our wildest dreams. And so, you know, a bunch of us just jumped off on that. Like, hey, we're a franchise. Yeah. We're truly Nolan in a way. Yeah. <laughs> And I do love, you know, it's pretty funny because this picture with you and your daughter, which is adorable. Uh, you Thank know, you. one of your Facebook fans or friends uh, pointed this out. Oh, know. no way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't even, that's I cool. did not even connect that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So <laughs> look at that. I'm reposting that. Uh-huh. I love nice. it. Yeah. It's a fun chair. So we're going to talk about the paranormal party uh, that you guys are putting together at Roadhouse. That's what we're. Uh, we're promoting right yeah, that's the big thing right now yeah okay so this is the one that's a camel view vash square and arrowhead uh, fountain so that's up in phoenix right. that's right uh, and you did you're doing your own tucson version at roadhouse which Correct. yeah which i think is even a uh, better location now to be a part of the arizona ghostbusters you have to come in with all your own gear already yeah we like to have a, a unity to it we like to look legit you know because we're kind of like mall santas in a way where kids will come up to us and say hey are you a real ghostbuster and you yeah. say yes and the coolest thing about it is to them in that moment you are a ghostbuster yeah you know it's like you're more real than the guys in the movie yes because you're there in the flesh and so it's yeah we like to look legit uh no half measures in this thing right i love it yeah, yeah. We're, okay we're gonna get back on the fm side here in five seconds all right uh and we'll continue this conversation Rock One 2.1 KFMA. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. I am joined in studio by a real Arizona Ghostbuster, Roy Wageman. Uh, and we're uh, talking about the organization and the group Arizona Ghostbusters, which if you're a fanatic of uh, Ghostbusters, the film franchise, the cartoon, all things Ghostbusters, you could be a part of this community. Mm-hmm. Uh, they actually span all over Arizona. So Phoenix and Tucson. And uh, Roy was, again, just at the Tucson Festival of Books being featured on the news because uh, everyone lights up when they see an actual Ghostbusters. Buster. seriously yeah. dressed up you know and then so it's not just comic-con right. where you do this cosplay you're going year-round to different events and and kind of bringing joy to people right exactly we do about 40 events a year uh usually for nonprofit and charitable organizations we we just like to show up and represent the longevity of this franchise and the identif- uh, identifiability of it like yeah. people absolutely light up and it's 
not just the kids. It's a lot of parents that, yeah. you know, well, 80s the, guys my age. Yeah, because, I mean, the movie came out initially. The original one came out, what, 85? Uh, 84, 40 80. years ago. So, oh yeah, it's the 40th year. anniversary yeah. this yeah. year. And a Ghostbusters a new movie, the sequel, uh, and what's it called again? Uh, Frozen Empire. Fro Ghost Frozen Busters, Empire, because I keep Empire. thinking Afterlife, which yeah. is the last one. The last one. Uh, which is a sequel to the reboot, which, you know, uh, fans are geeking out about because it hits all the nostalgia points, right? It has the original yeah. cast members coming back, you know, everyone that's still alive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it has original characters coming back, exactly. and they're going to just wrap this thing up with a bow, but probably continue the franchise as right. well. And yeah, Paul Rudd continues to start it. Breaking it open. Yeah, the last one was a real cool like catch up. It was directed by Jason Reitman, who was yep. the son of the original director, Ivan Reitman. Uh, so it was nice them bringing back uh, all the old characters, establishing these new ones, the Spangler family. And so now they're bringing it back to New York, breaking it wide open. Yes. And I hear this one's more inspired by the real Ghostbusters cartoon series, which is really encouraging because that's just like... I mean, that's day-to-day -day things we're seeing him do as a kid growing up in uh, the late 80s. You know, that Ghostbusters cartoon show really you took on all, its own world. And, you know, like Huge. it was. Yeah, it, they it had more characters. It was just more, uh, just more fun. And it wasn't as dark and adult centric humor as the original Ghostbusters right. one and two are now being a, a super fan of Ghostbusters. And mm -hmm. I hope you don't mind me, uh, you know, labeling you that. Are yeah, do you act fanatics. as yeah, do you act like a gatekeeper as far as like when Afterlife came out? Were you like, they better not mess this up or angry letters galore? I mean, we were we're always constantly worried that they're going to tank the franchise because all we want is it to be good enough for them to make more. Yeah, right? yeah. We, yeah. we just want more. And there's so much uh, variability and possibility to these things. But we uh, we we just love it through and through, you know, and, and in spite of any criticism that might be leveled at Afterlife or as South Park puts it, the member berries. It's yeah, like, it's yeah. still yeah. nice to see that stuff. And uh, we're excited to see new stuff. Uh, it's true. But I mean, you know, nostalgia is big business. So, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. and especially with a franchise like this which was always fun, especially Ghostbusters 2. When it came out, it was way over the top. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and the release uh, had a lot of hype behind it. The Ghostbusters 1, initially, people didn't know if it was going to be a hit or not right now being uh you know an arizona ghostbuster mm -hmm. have you ever been uh, tempted to go to haunted places and try to attempt to contact or come in communication or uh, around real ghosts and That's then try to bust question. them uh you know it's it's kind of ironic i don't believe in ghosts like at what? all but yeah you can't be afraid of them if you don't believe They're in them right How, however <laughs> since i've been a, you know a little kid like most little boys completely psychotic i love to scare myself as much as possible yeah. so it's it's nice to just let yourself spiral and pretend that you do believe and you know it's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, that's too poor. I mean, that's that's upsetting, you know, like you, you've never had any paranormal experiences whatsoever. Huh? I mean, you know, like anybody, I've, I've lived in places that do have that feeling of dread yeah. or, mm -hmm. you know, these these weird vibes to it. And maybe weird things happen, but typically there's explanations for it. And I, you, I just like evidence, you know, here's the explanation, Roy. And, and the reality is that there is paranormal activity out there, but they're not going to mess around when they see an actual Ghostbuster. Right. So this is why you haven't had any contact with the paranormal <laughs> because they're like, wait a second. Uh, yeah, they can't run have around with this guy. You see where the backpack he's, he's wearing? legit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like he's going to put me in some kind of can. Right. Uh, I'm not messing around with that. I'm going to yeah. haunt somebody who's not armed or trained to be an actual Ghostbuster. They're like, oh, these things light up and play music? No way. we got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Robert from Late to the Party uh, also pointed out the Gatekeeper reference, which, is, of course, yep. is a reference in uh, Ghostbusters, uh, the original as mm -hmm, well. So that's right. I, key, I didn't key even drop a key master. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about this event at the Roadhouse. So if you are already planning to go out and watch a Ghostbusters uh, Frozen Empire mm -hmm. uh, when it does drop at theaters, and a lot of people are because you know it's going to be a fun family film and it's going to bring back all the nostalgia and be multi-generational mm -hmm. but you could also help raise money for a great time and you'll have arizona ghostbusters on location at the roadhouse what are the details for this event well we're going to be out there the 21st which is thursday the preview night uh out on the patio also the 22nd and 23rd we're going to be there from uh you know mid-afternoon through the last screening of the day uh, there's going to games prizes trivia contests we're gonna have three ectomobiles for you to check out tons of photo ops 
but the three big ectomobiles were yeah. a slow down for a second. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, that's ectomobiles. something I wanted to ask about because I've seen a few in Arizona. Yeah. How many total are there in Arizona? Do you yeah, know? I, you know, I don't have a full count of it, okay. but there's at least six of them out there. And you you're going to have half. Half event. half of them, we're going to have all the Tucson ones representing. Nice. I know there's a couple running around that aren't necessarily affiliated with mm. us. You know, they've got the logo flipping the bird and stuff. And we're like, ah, I don't know who that yes. is. Yeah, yes. It's not right. <laughs> no, but not uh, right. yeah, yeah, we're going to have, you know, and they're all just as sort of our characters are. Uh, they're all unique. I've got a Ford F-150 that's going to be the Ecto-150. Nice. We've got a, nice. a Jeep. We've got a Lowrider gonna be gonna be that's lit. very Tucson that's right there yeah if yeah. we were gonna have Tucson Ghostbusters right. they would definitely roll up in a low rider yeah, that's right. low rider Jeep and a Ford F-150 yep. yeah you've got, you've got exactly. all the bases covered for Tucson so, so no uh like station wagon Ecto-1s the low riders like a station wagon but okay. you know those uh those 59 caddies those are hard to come by yeah yeah, yeah so, no i know i get yeah. that i get that but that's still really cool so i mean uh, you could geek out on all that uh you know uh just uh, just all the Ghostbusters uh, mm -hmm. stuff that's going to be at Roadhouse yeah. in the parking lot, in the lobby, of course, before you go and check out the movie. Can't and, miss us. Yeah. But I the know. big big thing is the charity raffle. Yeah, so it's um, supporting three local nonprofits. You know, since I joined the group, I've, uh, you know, been encouraged and seeing like what more we can do rather than just having our presence there to draw attention to a charity. You right. know, we can actively try and raise money. So we're doing charities for Tunidito wonderful organization that helps kids process grief from okay. the loss of a loved one. Nice. Uh, also the Humane Society and the Arizona Cancer Foundation. Uh, I think formerly the Arizona Oncology Foundation. So okay. come out, support kids, canines, and cancer. So what's going to be involved in the charity auction? I'm sure that you've been going around throughout the year trying to get uh, items donated that you could uh, raffle off. And so what are some of these items? Most of the items are actually coming from the members themselves, donated directly to it. Um, there's going to be, you know, collection of Funkos. There's going to be wall art. Uh, Roadhouse is so cool. They're putting up a couple of date night packages. Nice. That's two awesome. Free movie tickets and a uh, coupon for popcorn. Uh, yeah, so it's stuff like that. And, you know, it's going to be a real basic raffle, but we're going to have three buckets there, one for each charity. You take your stub, you throw it in that charity and uh 100 of the profits going directly to that charity i love yeah. it dude yeah, yeah. so it, it's it's taking fandom and passion for a franchise and i'm returning it uh to a positive experience and asset for the community that's right. and so this event that's happening at the roadhouse is when uh, it is the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, starting around 3 p.m. through the last screening of the day. Yeah, Can't so, miss us. yeah, it's not this weekend, but next weekend. You get more information, Arizona Dose, uh, Ghostbusters dot com, or you can follow them on social media. And actually, you should do both on Instagram and Facebook, Arizona Ghostbusters. Uh, there, you're going to see all different types of great uh, pictures of the group uh, dressed out in full cause business attire. <laughs> and you can hang out with the Arizona Ghostbusters while watching the newest release from Ghostbusters. Uh, Frozen Empire at the Roadhouse next weekend. Again, Arizona Ghostbusters.com. Roy Waysman, thanks for coming in, man. It's good. Pleasure meeting you and keep up uh, the good work. And hopefully, uh, you'll see one of these ghosts in real life one of these times so you could bust them. Hey, thanks for having me in. <laughs> no worries. We're going to hit the reset, keep the conversation moving on to podcast broadcast. And uh, we have more coming up after Bring Me the Horizon and Rock One 2.1. Clear. Excellent job there, Roy. Mm, thank you so much. Is there anything that we missed? I think we got... uh, I didn't get to work in Bustin' makes me feel good, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a that's a joke that lands well here. But uh, you got it on the podcast, so that's good. Hey, all right. <laughs> yes, and you'll be able to see the podcast, and we'll reclip it and and share some links for Arizona Ghostbusters. So I, I do appreciate. It. I think it's gonna be a super fun event, and yeah. I'll try to come out there on uh, let's see Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, so yeah. I'll try to come we all have work Thursday. on Monday, so. Most of us kind of introverts practice yes. extroverts, so we're going to be exhausted by Saturday night. <laughs> right. Same way, man. Same way. I'm, I'm very much a, an extrovert introvert, right? Right. An introvert right. in real life, and but extrovert as far as my job and all the jobs and going out there. Fake it till you make it, man. <laughs> yeah. I love it, dude. Well, it's good meeting you. Uh, everyone else, uh, earlier this morning, uh, we talked about somebody who attempted to go viral, uh, but it backfired on him because everyone turned and said, actually, you're the dick. This is TikTok Dick.
you, the more you text, the more the, you increase your chances to qualify to win. And the company is giving away $2,024 each and every day for the foreseeable future. Right. A month and a half they're doing this, giving away tons of money. Hopefully you're going to be our next big winner. Uh, you can get more details at kfma.com. Message and data rates may apply. All right, it's time for a PSA of the day. Now, if you're going to infuriate somebody, uh, and then uh, bust out your phone to record them in hopes of capturing like a Karen moment to mm -hmm. go viral. You got to be careful because you might come off looking like the D bag and people could turn on you. And this is an example that I have evidence of, right? One man bit off a little more than he could chew after posting a video to TikTok that quickly went viral as viewers teamed up against him. Mm. Yeah, he shared it on his account. He attempted to put Little Caesars manager on blast after she slammed him for demanding a refund. Now, Little Caesars. Pretty affordable. Yeah, it's like, what, six bucks? <laughs> seven bucks for oh, this order. Seven, right? okay. Uh, now, what he likely didn't expect was for viewers to, you know, side with the unimpressed manager. In fact, actually, he tried to get a refund saying he got a uh, staph, uh, I can't even pronounce this, a staphylococcus uh, meningitis. Staphylococcus? Yeah, staphylococcus yeah. Uh, meningitis. What kind of meningitis is that? Uh, not good. Okay. Yeah. Well, he makes you very sick. Yeah. He claimed to have got it from the garlic butter. Now, the garlic butter, of course, is already prepackaged and whatnot. And, you know, to give yourself that diagnosis, that's a pretty, you know, yeah. bold and uh, like detailed diagnosis. Like, oh, really? So you ate this garlic butter and you immediately diagnosed yourself with this type of meningitis? Yeah. Considering that that meningitis normally comes from like surgeries and hospitals. Oh, okay. It's so not going to come from a Friggin' Little Caesars. Well, the thing is, this Little Caesars manager, I think she knew better as well. And so she gave him attitude, but still gave him a refund. And I do have the viral video that you're going to be able to see on the podcast broadcast, but let's listen to it. Staphylococcus meningitis. He got staphylococcus from all of this garlic butter. That's not what I said. You keep your napkin, though. Bagging him. You don't have to record me. I know what I said. I didn't call you and say I got food poisoning no it's just you i came in here to poisoning. am i allowed I can i say it's all gone and you've got garlic butter all over it no wonder you got sick oh gone can i he did eat like half the pizza as well and uh, there is a mess inside the box as he's trying to get back half a pizza to demand seven dollars back and uh, this is through a drive through uh, by the way and she is not having it am i allowed to talk or no Wait, bitch you talk before you turn the camera on though right Right, Mr. I got food poisoning. No, I, I said about right? three. I said about three words before you started yelling at me. Really? Yeah. Even your pizza knows you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> you need to work on your customer service. I don't let liars come to my store. I am not a liar. You said you got staphylococcus meningitis. I from said garlic butter. <laughs> That's a lie. You guys work for this? No. Okay, I'm refunding I... you. Drop it. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. You want uh, like is the customer always right? Not if you spend under ten dollars. I don't think that gives you the type of like privilege that you're desiring. Now, uh, the man attempted to like interrupt her. She shows the pizza box and uh, that he had returned most of its contents eaten. So it was it was half eaten already. Now, the man responded by stating that she needed to work on her customer service, as you heard. And this video has garnered 3.6 million views on TikTok with the viewers all siding with the manager. Right. Like, I, I hate that whole thing of like, you need to work on your customer service. It's like, no, I don't have to deal with this. They don't pay me enough to deal with jackasses like you. Yeah. Who's uh, coming in saying you got meningitis from garlic butter Ugh. and you want a seven dollar refund? Yeah, right. Like that's gonna like what cure you of your meningitis? Yeah, and all your ailments. They take it up with corporate. Anyways, the comments uh, basically all rose to this dude. Uh, one person said, "Give that woman a raise." Another one asked, "Why did you eat half the pizza then bring it back, dummy?" <laughs> I mean, you pretty much got seven dollars worth, and I mean, you're full at that point. When a single person, a single man, and you can tell he's chubby, he's got chubby arms uh but a single man gets a, a little caesar's pizza and eats half of it that man is full you know and if you eat a whole pizza you're giving up on life and you got mm. bigger problems yeah yeah dude. yeah many slam the man's demand for a refund considering the pizza only cost seven dollars and praise the manager for dragging him uh, for the wild request and uh then the final quote said she ended uh you so bad 
oh my God, I would delete this. But of course, the kids these days are all about the clout chase. Right. 3.6 million views guarantees that this guy is going to keep the video up no matter how bad he looks. So uh, whose side are you it. on? The customers or the managers? Let me know. 600 KFMA, 605 362. We have so much more uh, to go, including tickets to give away for five fingers. There's a fun fact. We got zero calls on that. So hot topic. We're hitting it. <laughs> hitting it in all cylinders. Did get a lot of text messages, though. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people texting to qualify to win. And I'd like to thank uh, Roy again for coming in. Uh, that was good. Arizona's Ghostbusters.com. If you guys want to check out what they do. Uh, and uh, that should be a good event next weekend to be able to see the movie. Are you going to see that movie? Are you a fan of the uh, Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. I don't think I've ever actually seen one completely. Oh, come on, dude. Really? I'm so bad. Like, this is the game that my boyfriend are all, and I are always playing. He's like, have you seen 30 Days of Night? No. Have you seen this? No. Yeah, but okay, 30 Days of Night, I haven't seen that either. I don't even know what you're referring to, but Ghostbusters is like Americana at this point. I, I mean, didn't it's see like, something about Mary until like six months ago. I understand it, but I just don't understand how, like, if you grew up with a TV in the house, how you were able to actively avoid uh, not even knowing or seeing either Ghostbusters 1, Ghostbusters 2, or the Ghostbusters cartoon. Did you drink any ectoplasm high C? No. It's what I work with, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what to do here, you know? Like, no, it's probably too busy rewatching Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Okay, same difference, right? That's another franchise mm -hmm. that is... Uh, I was very obsessed with that as a kid. Yeah, what is this about eating whole pizza? <laughs> uh, I, I do that with frozen pizza sometimes. I try not to. Uh, and when I do, I only eat the top. And I try to leave a bunch of carbs behind. <laughs> That's how I justify it. In fact, actually, you know, I just saw this piece. I just pulled it up. I didn't even really look at it. But it, the headline reads, I'm a dietitian. Here's what I order at McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dessert to stay on a healthy track. And I'm like, well, you got my attention. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what I do. And I've mentioned this before. It's kind of just low-carb action. So um, even this past weekend, I have for breakfast, I, I drove through to keep it cheap. I did the two for five sausage egg muffins, right? Mm -hmm. But I hate the sausage. And I don't think it's healthy at all. And I don't think it's real, right? So I'll take the sausage off, right? And then um, I'm basically just eating like an egg mm -hmm. uh, McMuffin yeah. right? with egg and cheese. But I'll order a hash brown as well. So hash brown on that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's almost like a vegetarian-ish. Ish. Ish. I know the egg and cheese or whatever. <laughs> you know, whatever. But um, but that's delicious. And, I, and, and then I'll, I won't eat like the top dry part of the English muffin. If I do eat it, I'll take a little bites around the edge like I'm a little naughty boy. But it I won't just eat the whole thing. It sounds like you can make two eggs and a hash brown at home. Okay. It doesn't taste the same, weirdo. And I've attempted this. Uh, in fact, actually, I went on this egg bin muffin diet when I was working with Schmonty because mm -hmm. I read that butter was a good brain food, right? It was the fats that kind of like gave your brain energy. And I'm always looking for brain hacks, right? Because I sound like a moron most of the time. So I was waking up like an extra half hour early to make homemade egg bin muffins. I had the Canadian bacon. Mm -hmm. I got the little egg circles that I bought oh, there. Fancy. So yeah, so I would make it like uh, as close to a English or an egg bin muffin as possible. Put a little butter on the, uh, you know, the English muffins, get the wheat English muffins because I'm like healthy. Yeah, uh, I gained like 20 pounds, dude. I was the fattest I ever been and didn't get any smarter. So I was still stupid, but fat, fatter and stupider. So it didn't work out. Rock one, two by one KF May. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. Before we get into our head story uh, a little bit later on, our, our main story, which is about the California queen pin mom who's running an all girl gang in a suburban California town that's straight out of a Netflix plot line. Yeah, well, uh, I was telling, awesome. yeah, I was telling weirdo about you know my diet habits, trying to be healthy at fast food or mm -hmm. while eating fast food and being on fast food diet. Um, you know, a lot of people have a fast food budget at, or don't necessarily have the time to cook at home. And this headline caught my attention saying, I'm a dietitian. Here's what I order at McDonald's for breakfast, lunch, and dessert to stay on a healthy track. And I still didn't even get to the answer. I was just telling weirdo how fat I got. Uh, they say the, okay, look at this. Uh, one headline I'm reading right off the bat. A dietitian has revealed the healthiest options on a McDonald's menu, which include the egg and muffin. Okay. Yeah. And to make crispy chicken sandwich which is surprising, right? It's really surprising. That is surprising. So, you know, and again, I'm always looking at the carbs and I think the carbs are nine times out of 10, the biggest issue. So mm. the more you lean towards vegetables and protein, the healthier and more weight you're going to lose. Yeah. In theory. Now, this dietitian does rec recommend eating McDonald's every day. Yeah. All right. But uh, so 
Uh, she does start with an egg muffin, which contains 310 calories, which six grams of saturated fat and barely any sugar, which is good. But that's the egg muffin. That's not the sausage egg muffin. You gotta right. remember that. That's a whole nother game. All right. Now, um, you say uh, the chicken actually packs 17 grams of protein. Okay. Uh, which is pretty good. So it's similar to the breakfast that she would make at home, an English muffin, cheese, and a slice of Canadian bacon, relatively low in sodium. So that's going to be healthy. And then for lunch, she says it's all about the Miss Cr Mick crispy chicken sandwich, which contains 470 calories, which is surprising because it's still deep fried chicken. Yeah. But they say it packs, uh, you know, it's roughly the equivalent of chicken, mashed potatoes, and vegetables, packs 26 grams of filling protein, and it's low in fat and does contain two teaspoons of sugar. All right. But the downside is high sodium. But essentially, mm -hmm. this dietitian was saying those are the two fast food hacks at McDonald's to keep it low fat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, what do you order when you drive through for, do you order with your dietary restrictions? Should I even ask you anything about food or are you just eating styrofoam and no. like protein bars? Uh, I mean, definitely protein bars, but like, yeah, if we go anywhere like Wendy's, like I will get a grilled chicken sandwich just as a lettuce wrap. Like I get rid of the bread. Then that makes it really easy. Right. Um, but we do usually like Chipotle and mod pizza. Okay. Because they, they use a lot of clean ingredients. So, and yes, I am that person that will call ahead and ask for ingredients. Yeah. I will. Because just the, the amount of restrictions we have in our house it sucks. Yeah, it's annoying. But I will say this. If you're on a diet and you eat pizza, you just eat the top of the pizza and don't eat the crust of the dough. And you're good to go. Like mod that pizza, no carb. Uh, mod pizza has a cauliflower crust. Yeah. It's really healthy. And Whatever. so you can still no. have pizza. Look, I've had it. It's okay. Right. But I, I don't trust it. I still think, you know, yes, cauliflower, but it still tastes too much like red to me. And I haven't seen any long-term studies of you being able to eat that and thinking that it is a completely guilt-free pizza. Okay. But I do understand the cauliflower aspect of it, but I think everything that they put together to make it mm. a cauliflower crust could be so you know, wait, worse for you. You're eating just the tops of the pizzas. You're just eating like, yeah, the yeah. cheese and the meat. And the sauce. And First the sauce. off, there's places that you could go fancy Italian restaurants where it's basically pizza in a bowl. And yeah, that's delicious. First, those are all the ingredients that we love, mm -hmm. right? So you you could just do those ingredients. It's still going to taste like delicious pizza as long as you got the melted cheese, the marinara sauce, and then whatever toppings that you prefer. Mm -hmm. You don't need the, the dough. You don't need it. You don't need the crust, any of it. Uh, and so, yeah, I will like a maniac. I'll, I'll do a frozen pizza right now. It's high in sodium. I get that. Uh, but I'm just scraping the top of, with my teeth. So at the end, <laughs> you see these like uh, basically like a skeleton of a pizza uh, mm -hmm. with the majority of the crust and dough left behind. A little bites here and there just to add to the flavor profile. Okay. But most of it, I'm just getting filled up with the cheese and the pepperoni and whatnot. And that's how I eat a whole frozen pizza and not feel <laughs> guilty about it. I've recently seen people taking uh, sweet potatoes and making them into like a pizza crust. And it looks delicious. Yeah, whatever. And it's a healthier option. Mm. No, again, I, I just say <laughs> cut out You're the like, bottom. I would just rather just have cheese and sauce and meat. Just go all Got tops. It. All top. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't stop at the top, man. It's the best part of the pizza. Same thing with like muffins, right? You eat the muffin top. You don't eat the muffin bottom. Because uh, that's Seriously? the best part of the muffin. Yeah. No, you eat the whole muffin. Well, then that's all carbs. But if you only eat the top, that's 50% less carbs. That's I mean, I, I guess it's portion control. Oh, all right. And you <laughs> still get a little bit of the flavor. All right. Well, let's keep this conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. I know it's riveting, uh, but we do have our top story of the day that we're going to share with you after music from Breaking Ben. So keep it right here. It's Rock 1 2.1. Clear. Oh, uh, yeah. In fact, actually, what am I eating today? Well, I, you know, I've been on this... An air fried chicken wing kick, mm. uh, which is healthy. Did you get an air fryer? I've had an air fryer for a little bit. Okay. And, you know, to be honest with you, for a while, I've had air fried chicken wings for since I've got, I first got an air fryer, right? It wasn't until recently that I figured out how to make these where they taste like restaurant quality crispy chicken wings, which has been mind blowing and a mm -hmm. game changer. And what it was, was I was getting these kind of pre marinated chicken wings like at Sprouts. Uh, in like a pan and throw it in there, air fry it. Yeah. It'd be fine. And it'd be a little bit crispy, but they'd basically be like big chicken wings. Mm -hmm. Not like restaurant quality. Restaurant quality chicken wings is deep fried crispy chicken wings. And Hell you put yeah. the sauce on it, right? Yeah. Uh, that's what everyone loves. Uh, so 
recently I bought a bag of Tyson frozen chicken wings. Mm -hmm. I was just on a budget and it was like a three pound bag. And I'm like, well, F it. I'm just going to grab these. And they're, they look like pretty meaty. And so the, the process of these frozen chicken wings obviously doesn't take me 20 minutes to make them. It takes me an hour. Yeah. So I have to put it in the air fryer for an hour, uh, around 50 minutes, still a long time. But doing that from frozen going air fried mm -hmm. gives it that restaurant quality chicken wing where I'm like, this is my new breakfast, lunch and dinner. Yeah. Yeah. And I know the skin is kind of like the worst part for you. But when it's air fried, is it, though? You know, I don't know. I mean, it just depends on whether you like spray a little butter on it or um, uh, like cooking, like cooking spray. That's always been like a piece of advice I've been given for air fryers. You, you just give it that little spritz. I do no spritz. I do no spritz. Oh, I do so you no just go oil. from beginning to end. Yes. Nothing dude, on yeah, it. Yeah. Throw and, some sauce done. And I, yeah, exactly. When they're done, I toss it in sauce and then good to go. And honestly, it has tasted like I could not tell the difference. I would love to do a side by side, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, and the only problem I've come across is cooking them a little too long. Uh, to where some of them are dry. So I just got to figure out that sweet spot on the timer. But psh. have you ever taken leftover nachos, right? Because they're usually always soggy and gross and put them in the air fryer. No, but that I can see has that. been delicious. Yeah, I know. That was a hack my girlfriend found on like Instagram or something. And it works. Yeah. So good. Yeah. So uh, while the, the hack that I'm doing is so my new air fryer comes with like three things. It has a bottom tray, mm -hmm. right? Which I was just using as the tray. Uh, of course, it has that little uh, like grill thing that you, you put stuff on. And then it has like this air fry basket. And so I just recently figured out, because I'm a moron, that if I put the bottom tray in there with some like, you know, tin foil to capture the grease and the fat and then put the chicken wings directly on the basket, then I got 100% circulation around the wing. Yeah. So they're not laying flat on metal. <laughs> Look at you. I know, I know. Getting a culinary arts thanks to an air fryer. I did. I am seriously the king of wings. And I, now it's just uh, like the only problem I have is to try to pick out which sauce I want to like, you know, indulge Do in. a flight. Do a flight of sauces and, and your own home. Then you I'm don't not have doing to hot choose. ones. I'm the first. I'm not doing hot ones. I'm doing flavorful ones. That's, That's fine. Uh, That's fine. Because that way you don't have to choose just one. You can have three or four. Yeah. I don't, well, I guess I know what I'm having for lunch. This week. <laughs> and tomorrow and on Friday. It's that good. Yes. Uh, so our top story is the California Queen pin. We're going to break that down uh, right after this. Uh, we tried to play the name game today, but it was the reverse name game because there's a list on Reddit of, you know, everyday items that have names. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Reddit was like, actually, you could come up with better names for these things. Like you jet skis, if you called them motorcycles, that'd be way better. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so we turned that information into a game to give out tickets when a little something like this. Here's Think Fast. If May, if that doesn't get you amped to see Stained Live, I don't know what would. And I'm so glad that Aaron Lewis dropped the country shtick and returned to his rock roots. Yes. As uh, Stained's going to be performing with Breaking Benjamin October 19th at the Talking Stick Resort Amphitheater. Now, I know that I posted October 18th on Facebook page. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I decided not to edit it because, honestly, first off, the show's like six months away. Uh, secondly, if it caused your attention, then you really care and you'll know the official date when you get there. Right? Exactly. All right. Uh, I do have a pair of tickets to give away for that concert before those tickets go on sale this Friday at 10 a.m. It's a big deal. And, uh, you know, before we get into uh, the music drop and uh, opening up the phone lines, which is 600 KFMA, 600 5362, if you want to win those tickets, we're going to play Think Fast. And this is called the Better Name Game. So uh, here's hmm. the deal. Uh, I came across this uh, thread talking about uh, everyday items that have names, but they could have had better names, mm -hmm. right? That better describe them. Okay. You know, so what I'm going to do is give you the better name and then you have to guess oh, the original name that that better name is associated with. And I'll give you an example. Okay. Later. All right. So if I said uh, something should be called birthquakes, birthquakes, what would that be? Now, keep in mind, you had four kids. So it's a pregnancy side effect. Birthquakes. Birthquakes. Yes. Uh, 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 I don't know. <laughs> well, can you keep <laughs> mentally frying down, on, frying out on me? Uh, uh, uh. To, to, today, birthquakes and it's something that happens before you give birth. Uh, you know, and this is how you know you're Braxton Hicks. 
Contractions? The, yeah, contractions. Braxton Hicks, give me That's a break. That's what they're dude. called. Whatever, dude. Braxton they're, Hicks they're, contractions. Okay, don't give me that. Uh, That's not. They're, they're not real contractions. Whatever, dude. They're uh, contractions. Is the the birthquakes is the better name for contractions? That's the point. Okay. Braxton Hicks. I'm like, I don't need it. Like a word of a dictionary. Word of a dictionary. See, God damn, it's too <laughs> too stupid for you to drop out the actual. Uh, like terminology for these things. But yes, birthquakes is a better name for contradictions. That's <laughs> the contractions. All right. So you have to, or sorry, contractions. Yes. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Anyways, I want to play a game. Okay. 600KFMA, 605362. If you want to win tickets for Breaking Benjamin and Stained, call right now. We're going to play Think Fast, uh, the better name game. So it's simple. I'm going to give you one of these better names. You're going to buzz in with your name to tell me what it is. And if you guess correctly, you get a point. And if you guess incorrectly, your opponent gets a point. Okay? So simple as that. And we'll start off with uh, caller number six and caller number nine. And again, so like the example is Birthquakes uh, is a better name for contractions. Okay? For contractions. Rocco 2.1, what's your name? Matt. All right, Matt, you're going to be one of my contestants. Let's see who you're playing against. Rockwood 2.1, who's this? Hey, this is Kyle. Kyle. All right, Matt versus Kyle in the better name game, Think Fast Edition. So here's the deal. I'm going to give you a better name. You're going to give me what the name is supposed to describe, okay? Buzz in with your right. name if you think you know, okay? All right. So here's our first suggestion here. All right. Instead of saying these... They should be called substitutes. Substitutes. Matt. Matt. Options. Uh, options. Options. Nope. No, not what I'm looking for, Matt. I'm nope. gonna give that point to uh, Kyle. It's, nope. Uh, so instead of saying these that you put in your mouth, you should call them substitutes. Do you have a guess? Dentures. Dentures is correct. Yeah. All right. One point for Kyle there. See, that's how this works. Uh, I'm going to give you another example. All right. And instead of calling these, all right. That was the that was the example. Of Think fast. It was kind of a shit show, to be honest with you. It's it was early in the morning. In fact, actually, I I, I blame today's uh, like mental regression off of the fact that I hit the snooze button this morning. And I know this is something you should never do. You should never go back to sleep after hitting the snooze because we sleep in 90 minute cycles. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to sleep after waking up and then you wake up again, just a couple minutes later, you've interrupted that 90 minute cycle. And it's so hard to overcome that. Mm -hmm. And that's my excuse for being extra dumb today. Huh? Does it work? Okay. That's I did that going. last week too. I, I know. fell back asleep on the couch. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? You don't want to do that. No. That's fact. So, you know, let that be known. All right. We're going to, a couple of things that uh, we didn't get to. Uh, there was X Men 97 showrunner, uh, Bo DeMeo, has been fired from Marvel and nobody knows why. Hmm. Uh, yeah. It's just interesting. A uh, former Boeing employee uh, who worked with the deceased whistleblower, John Barnett, who uh, technically committed suicide the other day. Uh, claim that technicians were constantly under pressure to make quick fixes and not document mistakes. I mean, Boeing nonstop, it, like their stock is dropping. In fact, another plane was grounded because uh, gasoline was pouring out of the landing gear. So, yeah, I just watched the John Oliver episode about Boeing and yes. terrifying. Yeah, Professor John does an excellent oh my uh, God. explanation and takedown of Boeing and essentially it was a merger that made them cut corners and now that's where all these problems are coming from. And apparently if you try to reveal too much, you'll get whacked. Mm. Uh, so we'll see. It's Rock One 2.1 KF May. Welcome back to Beef Vegan Presents. Uh, that was Breaking Ben with the Diary of Jane. Of course, you can see them with Stained when they come through Phoenix. We'll be giving away more tickets for that show tomorrow morning. Uh, but here's our top story for the podcast broadcast. A millionaire queen pin who was arrested for operating a 12-strong female gang called the California Girls, <laughs> straight off, ripped it from the Beach Boys. Nice. They stole, allegedly, uh, $8 million in designer gear and stored them in her mansion and sold them in Amazon. So it was a classic uh, steal and resell. They were stealing stuff from like Ulta, right? Uh, and the Ulta CEO just recently spoke out against her uh, and everyone else. So again, she was already rich, uh, came up with this grand scheme uh, and recruited a bunch of girls to basically shoplift the Ulta and then go ahead and resell this on Amazon and made a ton of money in the process. 
Uh, so I'll, let me break this down for you. Okay. Her name's Michelle Mack. She's 53 years old. Uh, and she alleged got over 3 million or she, she would uh, loot and steal from stores across the country. Uh, and mail the loot back to her $3 million home. Yeah, she would give them lists of what she wanted and paid their airfares and a lot more to a def- dozen different states. So this is the definition of organized crime. Yeah, She was organized and recruiting these women, and then she's like, hey, there's an Ulta in Nebraska. I'm going to fly you out there, steal as much as you can, and then mail it back to me. That's crazy. I know. Like it, it But actually really smart because it's like you're not just like, robbing the three local altas near you yes you're sending them across the country all across the country prosecutors have charged her her husband kenneth as well and seven known associates with 136 felony counts of grand theft now this is a plot worthy Damn. of a hollywood heist movie uh, because it's a wealthy california mom michelle mack uh, stands accused of orchestrating this nationwide shoplifting syndicate that specialized in swapping, uh, swiping makeup and clothes worth millions. So here are the takeaways, okay? She allegedly funded a team of California girls who jet sailed across the country, pilfering from stores like Lens Crafters, Sephora, and Ulta. Mm. All right, her $3 million mansion doubled as a stash house, housing a mini store of goods worth a whopping $350,000. Nice. Yeah, her Amazon front, uh, the online makeup store offered uh, steep discounts Hinting at some seriously shading, shady dealings. So you can get this at Alta for $100, but oh, we'll sell it to you for 20 100% profit, right? Now, text exchange read like lines from a crime thriller with Mac and her cohorts discussing loot hauls and shipping logistics. And authorities raided her ma- mansion, seizing parcels uh, destined for shipment and slapping uh, with a laundry list of charges, including grand theft and organized retail crime. Uh, the real victims here are everyone that ordered makeup from her right before she got arrested and couldn't <laughs> mail it out. You know, no refunds. Dude. Nope. You're like, damn it. <laughs> now, the saga, complete with high flying antics and uh, luxury loot, paints a picture of a crime ring. As audacious as it is absurd, from jet-setting thieves to shady Amazon dealings, this story has all the makings of a true crime comedy blockbuster. Now, who would you star in it? Now, here's a picture of her. Oh, yeah, she's a picture. Okay, so this is the picture of Michelle Mack, which already has an awesome name. Mm-hmm. You know, Michelle Mack is quick to jack all of the makeup accessories. Uh, so, I mean, we could like, we could spice it up a little bit with some like fighting action sequences. Mm. And then, uh, no, that's not her, but the other lady blonde, you do Charlize Theron, right? Cause you're always going to take these people and make them hotter. Yes. Charlize Theron is definitely somebody who's probably lining up to play this woman immediately. Uh, yeah. The picture that you're seeing right now is an alleged gang member named Alina Franco, who reportedly had $67,000 worth of stolen beauty uh, products at her home in California. And this, this, the CEO, uh, Dave Kimball weighed in on it, but you know, he doesn't look like he's hurting for any cash. So it's one yeah. of those situations where you steal from the rich and resell to the poor. <laughs> Just you heard it here first. You're definitely going to see it on Netflix uh, coming to a streaming network near you sometime in the near future. Let's hit the reset. Be back with a beef tip after these words. Keep the conversation moving on the podcast broadcast. YouTube.com slash beef vegan. All right. If you're just joining us on the podcast and you want to see some of the pictures here. Yeah, but um, that that really is it. 2024 Robin Hood steal from the rich and sell to the poor. Resell to the poor. Yeah. God. Steep, steep discounts. So this Michelle with her husband. Uh, this was a few years ago and she's looking pretty good, you know, so it's an, it's a hot blonde California mom, good looking couple mm-hmm. living in a $3 million mansion decides that she wants to be basically, uh, the kingpin in an organized crime outfit. Wait, uh, this has been going on for 10 years. Yeah. A decade. Wow. Yeah. So maybe this is how they afforded this mansion in the first place in Northern San Diego County. Wow. That's insane. Yeah. That's a nice I wonder who ratted too. her out. I, you know, I think it was a series of things. It wasn't an individual snitch as opposed to it was, uh, you know, um, agencies finally kind of piecing together. Yeah. But very slowly uh, over 10 years. Yeah. You know, and I guess just going to the Amazon store and being like, wow, this is an American, uh, you know, outfit or reseller uh, that has these quality products at very, very low below, you know, wholesale prices. Like, how are they making money? How yeah. are they profiting? How are they getting away with it? Right. And two and two together as equals four. Wow. Yeah. 
and so many felonies. So, yeah, I'm actually excited. It's at least they're on starring in that for sure. Mm -hmm. Any beautiful blonde bombshell uh, who's in her 40s right now would definitely uh, pull it off. And Oh, my and God. Mark Ruffalo as her husband. Yeah. If we if we want to turn this a little comedy. Uh, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of uh, Ruffalo. Not really. And yeah, I don't think he looks like Kenneth that much. Well, maybe a little bit. A little. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people that could uh, play that part, I guess, mm -hmm. of average white guy. Um, but yeah, I like Michelle's eyes. I mean, you know, she has the eyes of a super felon, but, you know, <laughs> I, I have a type. That you type is criminal. Really do. <laughs> criminal oh, and crazy. Oh, 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 she's a mafioso queen pin. Hmm? I'd hit it. I'm aroused. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> So that was our top story today. All right. Earlier this morning, we did a round of, F oh, we actually uh, talked about, uh, you know, who you should have an affair with. If you were to have an affair, this according to a study, uh, and the study is ridiculous, but it's funny enough to share. So check this out. Papa Roach killed the noise of Rock 1 2.1 KFMA. Would you ever have an affair? You know, that's the question I was asked by Illicit Encounters in the UK, which uh, basically specializes on people having affairs. Mm. Now, uh, that isn't a question I'm asking you. Your plate's always full or yeah. already full. Ain't so it's not, yeah, not that you would have an affair. You live an affair, uh, which is good mm -hmm. for you, right? Uh, but if you were to have an affair, like what would be your type that you would look for at, as far as having an affair? Uh, I mean, probably just something so insanely attractive that I couldn't like keep. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, give me like some descriptions. Yeah. Give me some descriptions of physical traits that you look for, because I'm going to give you physical traits that other people have looked for. 1.5 million people were surveyed and okay. studied through their clicks. So in fact, actually, this almost feels like a data breach. Like they didn't know that they were being studied mm. based off of their behavior yeah. and their patterns. Uh, and I'll reveal with you what it said. Uh, and some of you out there might take this as good news. Like, <laughs> oh, I might be a, a pretty good mistress. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. What is some I, physical traits? Uh, I would go like super tall. Okay. You're going for tall? Super okay. tall, like 6'2 or taller. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, probably about like 200 pounds, really muscle. Like yeah, a lot of muscles. Swole. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're basically describing John Cena so far. So, <laughs> like, is that who you're trying to bang, John Cena? Uh, I want a dude with long hair. Okay. Like like metal head, long hair. Yeah, Roman Reigns. I mm -hmm. got it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Everything is going to be equated <laughs> to wrestlers now. Okay. Okay. So uh, there's definitely beauty standards in our society, but we're not all attracted to the same things when it comes to a romantic partner. But according to this new research, there's a more universal idea when it comes to the perfect partner for an affair or a cuddle buddy. Okay. And one company set out to find out who this ideal person is. Again, this uh, study comes from Illicit Encounters, the UK's largest dating site for married people. Think like Ashley Madison. Got it. Okay. Uh, and they're pretty much the experts on cheating and whoring around. So this is what they uh, did. They analyzed the views and clicks of more than 1.5 million members over the last year to see which profiles get the most attention. Okay. All right. This is what they learned. Wives who want to cheat on their husbands would ideally pick a man who's about 52 Five foot eleven, has green eyes and brown hair. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and I'm so close all the way around. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got brown hair. Uh, not fifty two, but you know, I could grow into that age. <laughs> five foot eleven, so close. I mean, my dating profile says five foot eleven, but it, it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also want this person to drive an Audi and make more than sixty four thousand dollars a year. Oh, okay. Which is great. The UK has low financial standards, <laughs> huh? Uh, they uh, they say they also have to have a size 10 feet, an athletic build, I'm out, and is a Libra, okay? Uh, so that's ideally what women are looking okay. for as far as to have an affair with a man. Now, for men looking for women to have an affair with, their ideal woman would be 44 years old, five foot six with blue eyes, blonde, curly hair, and earn more than 38000 Look okay. at the, the wage gap. See, I wouldn't even, like, think about, like, how much this person makes in a year to have an affair with them. Like, I just, that... Wouldn't you consider that for a partner? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, so, you that's know, interesting. poor people could put it down too. sometimes right? better than rich. You know, now she they would also or they would also look for women to be an Aquarius uh, with size five feet and a toned physique. And so this is because, of course, dudes put down their shoe size. Well, yeah, I want small feet. You know, sometimes if a girl has like uh, scuba flippers, you're out. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I don't want to see that. Not on hairy toes. Yeah, please. I don't want toes to look like fingers. 
That's it. Um, I, but this wasn't a study of my likes. This is a study of 1.5 mm-hmm. million Brits. Now, we all know that perfection is subjective and it varies from person to person. But uh, it's been a real eye opener uh, collecting this data is what they say. And they say, of course, the notion of a perfect person can be a bit of a romanticized ideal as well. But this is essentially the most popular options based off illicit uh, illicit encounters. Mm-hmm. So. All right, so that was a listening counter survey from earlier this morning. I see your comment, Mecca. I'll answer it here in just a second. We're almost out of time now. Uh, now, with that, though, I got to give you a beef tip. Uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to continue to give away tons of tickets. And that for Five Finger Death Punch, Marilyn Manson, uh, and, of course, Stained and Breaking Benjamin. We're also going to have hilarious comedian actor TJ Miller joining us on the show. And you'll be able to see him along because he'll be part of the podcast broadcast. And Herb Stratford will be returning to give us movie reviews. And it's going to be a super show. Uh, myself, Rico, and Weirdo all together uh, doing some good radio fun for you, as well as giving you keywords to text in so you can win $2,000 cash money. Speaking of that cash money, your next opportunity qualified to win to be the Rock 2.1 Cash Pal winner is with Robin Nash at 1115 today. Okay, so with that said, let's get into your beef tip. And now, uh, what do you do when you have a sore throat, weirdo? Uh, start pounding vitamin C. Well, you're doing it wrong. You're oh, supposed okay. to gargle hot, uh, gargle salt water. You ever heard this? Yes. Okay, yes. So this is a go-to that every elementary school nurse would make you do and whenever you complain about a sore throat. But next time you have a sore throat, instead of gargling salt water, try gargling pickle juice. Nope. No, I'm no. out. Okay, well, the high salt uh, content can reduce inflammation and give you some relief for maybe 15 minutes. So it's going to be a lot more salt than you're willing to put into a glass of warm sink water. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, they say that pickle juice works just as well, if not better. Uh, of course, if you don't like pickle juice, then uh, gargle salt water like a normal person. <laughs> but my beef tip to you is if you got pickles, you like pickles, you love them, and, and you have a sore throat, gargle the pickle juice and then eat a pickle. <laughs> And this is a segment brought to you by Scott Lehman, <laughs> dealer for the people who's always in a pickle. Uh, that's all the time we have for the show. Thank you guys for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, youtube.com slash be vegan. Be back tomorrow morning, bright and early. Till then, drive safe, ride safe. And as always, rock local. Later. When you wish upon a side of beef. beef. All right. So uh, back to Mecca's comment here. Um, Oh, Randy P is commenting too. Good to see you, Randy. All right. So I hey, beef did the afternoon noon show get dumped. It's been hard for me to comment in the mornings. Uh, yes and no. I mean, I haven't, uh, you know, d- started talking about my contract renewal yet. That's coming up here soon. Uh, so, you know, uh, obviously uh, doing an afternoon show, we, we revealed what the pros and cons would be. Uh, and I'm still leaning towards how there would be, it'd be more beneficial to the station and everything that we're putting out if we do an afternoon show, but that might've changed because now you're with rustics, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the weirdos, you know, betting her life with career opportunities <laughs> is fucking up our show. Uh, <laughs> I'm going back to my original career. Like I paid for an education and everything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the reality is uh, it's a safer uh, option to continue in the mornings uh, because, you know, this company is so old school minded. They value morning show shift more so than any other shift. So to put myself in a position of getting a, a salary that is deserved Mm -hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, and longevity within the company, or at least a little safety within the company, it's probably a better move uh, to stay in mornings, especially considering the availability for weirdo, uh, would not be, uh, there in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say this, uh, I still look forward to, uh, you know, being able to do live streams and special shows in the afternoon. When the opportunity presents themselves, meaning when we have uh, guests and musicians in studio that I feel like would be worthy of doing a, a live a special podcast or broadcast. And of course, if live broadcasting opportunities, and special events like Comic-Con potentially. So, I mean, if you do end up moving to the afternoons, like I would, I would just wouldn't be available three or four days a week. It'd just be like one or two. So I could still be around. You, what? Only one or two days a week as opposed to three or four days a week. Yeah. If you, if, moving afternoons yeah yeah okay so so it's not like i would completely disappear 
Yeah, well, again, uh, we haven't had that discussion yet, uh, yeah. and it is coming up here soon, and it does seem to me that the company is interested in keeping me around, which is good news. Yeah. Uh, and we'll just see when we sit down and we talk about it. But uh, for the time being, it's business as usual, and I appreciate uh, you checking out the the stream whenever you can, Mecca, whether you watch it live or you watch it on replay and comment uh, afterwards, because mm -hmm. we still see those comments. And the more comments, the better for, you know, growing the podcast right. and just growing the opportunities, because the bigger our numbers get, the more opportunities we're going to be able to bring in and more guests and, and more high profile guests to be able to participate because they look at these numbers. Right. They do. So, you know, the, the more legit we look on a national scale, uh, the cooler uh, opportunities and, and content we were able to uh, whip together and provide. So that's the goal. But either way, you know, this live stream is really just about the crew and everybody that participates with it on a regular basis or whether you're watching it live or on replay, it's appreciated. I'm going to show you this real quick on my way out and maybe we'll get this story yesterday, but there's a story that I saw about a self profane or uh, self proclaimed narcissist. Right. Okay. And I was recently, um, you know, called a narcissist during a breakup and, you know, it made me reflect and I'm like, am I? And I really hope I'm not. And I, I try not to have certain narcissistic traits. Uh, but the thing is, I see a picture of a screenshot of this guy's video talking about different traits that narcissists have being a self-proclaimed narcissist. And it kind of kicked me in the gut and like, son of a bitch, maybe I am a narcissist because he has a similar style, and let me know if you see it. Do you see it? A little. Beard and a backwards hat. Goddamn right. And a snapback, a son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, this is the, uh, the fuckboy uniform of narcissists. What? And I, it's too late for me to change my style. I've been rocking this for too long. Yeah. Uh, who knew that I was, uh, it was how I was presenting myself that turned me into a narcissist. Uh, so I'm going to go home, have some internal conflict, and we'll be back with a super show tomorrow, uh, starting around 8.30 when we get TJ Miller live on the stream. So uh, just set your you know, alarms and we'll see. You. Thank you so much for watching the show as always. And uh, first time commenters, commenters like Randy P. Shout out.